Hey everyone, welcome into the fourth and final episode of this season's Coaches Show. My name is Michael Rose, here along with Coach Will Compton of the Huddle Hippos. Behind the camera, the legendary Trey Grubb, our producer and color analyst extraordinaire. So glad you could be with us. A very special occasion is upon us here for our final show, but we will get to that momentarily. Right now, just looking back to look ahead, as we always do in football. I think that's kind of par for the course Throwing a little golf analogy for you all, but <laughs> uh, four and four uh, record overall, three and three in the district. Um, we're just talking over the last few weeks about how the hippos are in control of what comes next. Um, four wins at home, four tough uh, lessons learned on the road, but uh, back at Memorial on Friday night coming up here in a few days. But uh, as you look back to look ahead, what are some of the things that uh, come to the, come to mind as you look at this four and four record at this point? You know, I think the thing that's been, I guess, probably the biggest surprise for me, and like the most, uh, I guess, complimentary thing, is the physicalness of the defense. Uh, yeah, that's something that you know, not necessarily Huddle's been known for. You know, the explosive offenses is something that Huddle's always been known for. You know, going back into the, you know, all the quarterbacks that they've had here from Tyler to Chase to Will Hammond. Uh, now, Caden Stefik, you know, has always been known for its for its offense. Um, now, uh, we're starting to see a little bit of glimpses of the defense. You know, uh, we still blow our coverages from from time to time, and and we get beat on the back end. But uh, you know, having a goal line stand last week oh. uh, in three years that 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 I've been here, I don't remember having a, a goal line stand, and and having one versus a team like Vandergriff, who's a who is a in in themselves a physical football team, yes. and. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, one of the biggest takeaways, you know, that, you know, going out versus a team versus Round Rock, you know, a couple of weeks ago and then going out versus Vandegriff and just seeing, you know, how the on the defensive side of the football, the physicality was matched, uh, you know, in the trenches, uh, even on our offensive line did a, did a really, really good job uh, versus Vandegriff's defensive line. You know, it was it was tough sledding, uh, you know, for for the majority of the game. But, you know, it was a you know, it was a it was a dogfight, you know, and it was it was a slugfest in there and I think that's the the probably the biggest takeaway is that you know now looking back we don't have to be the the one hit one big ball you know type team you know we can be one of those teams that that'll sit there and you know we're willing to try to try to grind it out with you sure and uh, you know that that technically hasn't really been the mentality of, of Hutto and you know it's just a uh, kind of a change in our kids and uh, you know love to see it love to see the the mental toughness that they have. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned that goal line stance. This is nothing new. I mean, this has happened before. If I recall, I, I do believe there was at least one more earlier in the season where your defense came up big time and made some big stops. And that's uh, the takeaways, the stops, everything that's uh, really rolled into that. And I think it's because the uh, the head coach has really stepped into that defensive role <laughs> this season. <laughs> no, it, you're starting to sound like Gaylor. Uh, <laughs> no, it's you know it, it's just a group of kids. Yes. You know, it, it's a special group of kids. Uh, you know, a lot of them, like we talked about last week or, or two weeks ago when we talked, it, it's a lot of kids that that didn't really play prior to this year that you know are now getting their chance to to step up. Uh, and then with the injuries and everything else, we got we got some other guys that are stepping up and and really starting to make some plays for us. And you know, it's just a you know, it's a change of mentality. You know, they decided that they want to be a gritty bunch and, uh, you know, have really, really owned it. And, uh, you know, they're paying attention to the details. They're watching film. Uh, they're understanding the game plan. Uh, they're understanding what offenses are, are trying to do to them based on, you know, what they're lining up in. Uh, and having that football IQ will put you in the in the right position, you know. Mm -hmm. So when even when we make mistakes, we're coming off the field and we're saying, man, that was me. I understand that I should have done this. And, you know, that's the thing. You know, we may make – you know, we may have two mistakes, but it's not necessarily the same mistake. It's, uh, sure. you know, we're, we're able to fix that. Uh, just like the they hit us, you know, kind of looking back on Friday night, they hit us with a big post ball uh, right there before half, you know, to kind of put them up, uh, you know, going away. Uh, Hunter kind of got turned around on a big post ball yeah. and, uh, you know, come back in the second half, they, they, they ran a switch route and uh, – Got Rudy turned around uh, on that one. They called the switch late, uh, you know, two separate ways of getting us. And then they tried it again uh, a little bit later in the third quarter. Uh, the The kids adjusted the coverage on it. They put Briggs out to bracket on number on number one, uh, kind of like what we did versus Westwood uh, to number four so that he couldn't get free on us. And Braden Daniels uh, gets back there. We get the sack on third down and get off the field. And so, you know, understanding, you know, yeah, you know, 
we understand that Hunter and and Rudy aren't aren't necessarily the the fastest guys at the back end, and so you know they were making adjustments to to be able to help themselves out and put themselves in in great position, you know. And uh, I think the the football IQ of these guys is is way up there. Yes, yeah, sir. So this is Trey behind. You can't see me, folks, out there, but I am actually <laughs> here. I actually wanted to sort of tangent on that, uh, follow up on that that high IQ. Mm. It allows. It seems when watching them, it that's what seems to allow them to be that physical, right? Because they're playing more with uh, their athleticism rather than thinking through the game. Absolutely. You know, we're we we spend a lot of time as coaches basing stuff off of tendencies, and Coach Gaylor does it does a really good job of of understanding that. You know, if you line up in a tight end trip set with the running back on the right hand side, that ninety percent of the time you're going to throw the football. And then we're telling our kids that from Monday morning that and they line up in this set 90% of the time, they're going to do this, and here are the top three plays that they're going to run. Mm. And wow. the kids understanding, you know, that standpoint. And then now you have a former quarterback back there at safety. You have Cashton, who's a, a coach's kid who, you know, played some quarterback when he was a freshman and things like that. Uh, you know, prior to that we had Cam uh, who understood all those type of things. And so now they're able to put you in those situations, you know, to, you know, to be successful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a layered combination of things uh, of being able to get lined up, the number one lined up. Uh, yeah. You know, that's one thing. Ninety percent of the time, ninety-nine percent of the time, we're lined up correctly, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's a big thing. You don't see people just kind of scrambling around late, even with the motions and the shifts and the and the bump arounds and things like that. You know, uh, you know, we're able to line up, and then after that's communication. Yeah. One last note on that. So we commented about it during the game that from the second quarter on against Round Rock, it felt like the defense just their level of play just really skyrocketed a lot because um like you said they were being a lot more physical it was taking big plays to beat you you know without those two big plays you know it's what uh 24 to uh whatever 13 mm -hmm. as a final score so yeah certainly it's certainly noticeable out on the field for sure yeah and that's you know that's what we want you know we want people to change what they do uh and try something different you know uh you know, we knew that, you know, kind of looking back again, we knew that Vandergriff was going to try to line up and just, you know, take it right to us and, and, and run it down our throats. And so I challenged our guys before we got started that we couldn't let that happen. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, our game plan was that we, we had to be able to run the football uh, versus them. You know, got a little bit of bad news that, that Keelan was banged up uh, right before game time. Uh, you know, so it, it was a little tougher, but you know, guys like uh, like Beckworth stepped up, yeah, uh, and had a, had a really good game. You know, him and Beckett, you know, kind of double duty in there. Today came in, who's a primary defensive guy that has been crossing over uh, at the back end of practices, just you know, remembering what to do. Used to be a running back, uh, you know, and getting him out there. You know, so it's it's a it's a team effort, and uh, you know, overall, I was proud of my guys. You know, just the the effort that they played with, even you know. When the game was when the game was over, uh, you know, in those last three four plays, kids are still flying around to the mm -hmm. football and, and playing with great effort, and you know, and that's you know that's a sign of their character. You know, that's a sign of you know what they're going to be after football. Yep, yep. We actually commented uh, when we did our players of the game. Beckworth was our offensive guy because he really did that second half. His ability to get three, four yard chunks really helped y'all move down the field and have those long drives like you were talking about. Oh, so y'all have y'all have players of the game too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so who was the defense player of the game? Uh, I think we gave it to the entire defense. If I I'm think I yeah I commented that it was the defensive line for me. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Because exactly what you talked about at the beginning of the game. I think we did a – I don't know if it was three and out, but they didn't yeah. They didn't move the ball like they wanted to, right? And that was pretty much through the entire game. They had a lot of trouble going up in between the tackles. They were having to bounce it out or try to mm -hmm. do something like that because the defensive line just really stepped up. So I gave it to the defensive line. And special teams had to be littles? No, special oh. teams for us. Well, Casting? It, it was him getting back there and punting. It was, it was Casting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it was, it was just really uh, – just another kid that's like stepping into a role that uh you know maybe they did when they were younger or something just but just another person stepping up yeah no but both of those guys they did a phenomenal job you know casting stepping back there as a punter uh who's who is our backup punter but also 
our first uh, deep snapper. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> he can't snap it to himself, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, Old Orp was able to, uh, you know, step in as the snapper. Uh, you know, casting with. Uh, with Sordo out, you know, we needed a we needed a guy to step in. Uh, thought Cash would be able to do a great job. He did. Uh, Littles was ours uh, that we voted on as coaches staff. You know, mm-hmm. his his kickoff returns yes. uh, put us in some great field position uh, coming out. You know, didn't always uh, work out for us the best, but you know, thought that you know that was definitely a a, a big pick me up and uh, you know highlighted what he can do. You know, he he does a great job with the balls in his hands. Absolutely does. Well, that's to that point of of people stepping up of. Everything else, what I love about Hutto's play is it's always loose. No matter what the score is, no matter what the situation is, they play loose. They play what's in front of them. They don't tighten up. They don't over, you know, extend themselves. They just they take what's given to them. And I really appreciate calling that kind of a game. I'm glad and it looks like that for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say hopefully you can see it post game, but they do. They play. They're able to play. Uh, our our kids are very competitive, and you know they you know they they invest a lot into this. Mm-hmm. You know it's uh, it's not something that you know they just show up and, and you know take for granted. And so you know they're invested. Yes. Uh, you know this going in. This is my third year here. Um, a lot of these kids they've they've grown up here. They played here since AHY FCA. You know, so they're 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 invested in the program, and they're they're loving to see the the fruits of their labor. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's uh. That's huge. I mean, top to bottom, everyone that you've spoken about or to since the season began way back in August, like, I don't know what this is going to be like. I don't know what uh, <laughs> this is going to bring, but uh, everybody keeps bringing it. And I think that's a, it's a testament to the top down and the bottom up. I think everyone playing for themselves is, uh, is a huge testament to what this program is all about. And I think, uh, hello. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's it's the the circle of the yeah. Get a little uh little divine uh spotlight right he's here. He's so. got a, he's got a glow. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Um to the players, um coming up on Friday. It's senior night. It is. And uh I wonder what that's like for seniors. I remember thirty years ago for me how <laughs> how much it meant to, to be a senior in our program, but so time flies, and we don't realize how quickly time flies until it's right in our face. Oh, absolutely! You know that's uh, you know it's something that we talk about with our kids. You know, the very beginning of the year is that you know they're only guaranteed ten games, and you know it's what you make of those those games when you're there. You know that that sets you up for the playoffs. You know, do you, do you get eleven? Do you get twelve? Do you get sixteen? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and are you making the most of? You know that first practice. Uh, are you making the most of that summer going into it? Uh, and these kids, you know, uh, collectively as a group, can't speak enough of them. Uh, you know, we created the, you know, and I and I'll talk about a few of them. You know, we we created the the number zero, the agent zero, uh, for Brayton Anderson. He he's the first one in, in huddle history to to wear the agent zero, uh, and that was because he missed zero workouts uh, in his going into his junior year. Wow. Uh, so that's going to be, you know, something moving forward. That's going to be, uh, there's two jerseys that kids do not get to pick. Uh, and that's zero and that's one. Uh, I pick the, I pick who gets to wear zero and one, uh, cause agent zero has got to be, he's got to be that guy. He's got to be the one that's dependable. Uh, got to be the, the guy who, you know, we have zero doubts in day in and day out. Uh, and, and one is just going to be, he's going to be that dude for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. and so, uh, it was Alex green, uh, the previous year, which he, he went off for 2000 yards receiving. Uh, so I figured that, <laughs> that was a, that's a good one to follow up. It sure is. Uh, Dang. Keelan's wearing it this year and having a, having a phenomenal year, but, uh, you know, Brayton wearing that zero, uh, love seeing that, uh, love seeing Cashton, uh, LaPlante having a, a great year. I mean, he's a kid who's been banged up, uh, you know, freshman and sophomore, uh, junior year coming in, coming in about halfway through, and then now you know transferring positions from safety down into linebacker. Uh, you know, lots of questions on you know, you know, is he a linebacker? Is he physical? You know, is he gonna be able to transition into that? And just having a phenomenal year, uh, you know, and then showing that he can deep snap, showing that he can punch, showing that he can do you know a lot of different things. Uh, he's a pretty decent tight end too. We just haven't had a chance to be able to get him over there. Uh, you know, so a very versatile athlete that's going to be, you know, a great player, you know, on the, on the next level. Uh, you know, we just have so many, 
so many kids that, you know, I'd love to go through each and every one of them and talk about, you know, all the things sure. that, you know, that they do, uh, you know, for this team. You know, a guy that, you know, I love is uh, is Braden Stanfield. You know, he's a, he's a guy that, you know, last year, you know, was on varsity as a, as a junior, wanted to play, wanted to be out there, has a great motor, uh, was a special teams guy for us. Came in in the off season and really put in the work. Ended up as a starting outside linebacker, and you know has just been a has been a real blessing for us. You know, and then you also got guys like like Stone McCoy, uh, who doesn't get as much playing time, but I mean is a, is a tremendous leader in the in the locker room, tremendous leader in the weight room. Uh, you know, and I, I'll be the first one to write his uh, letter of recommendation. You know, sure. to talk about the type of person that he is uh, when it's not football, mm. because you know. Like we tell all of our kids, the game is going to be done with you before you're done with the game. Uh, and what you are after that is, is so much bigger. Yeah. And so, you know, love all these kids. Uh, I've appreciated everything that they've done, you know, why they're here. Uh, it's been amazing, you know, just seeing the growth uh, in the three years from, from me coming in with them as sophomores. Uh, we had Kastian, Cam, and Brayton were the three sophomores that came up uh, my first year. Uh, and they were all kind of role players uh, that first year to now, you know, the impact that they made uh, their senior year, not just on the field, but in the locker room as well uh, and with the younger players uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, I was going to talk about the the seniors in terms of preparation for games, preparation for practice, you know, the how you prepare, the weight room, all that stuff. Um, how has uh, the younger kids – um, taken to that because I'm sure that's one of the things your seniors do help you lead with is they leave that behind so that others know what to do next year. They yeah. know what it takes to do what they got to do. Absolutely. You know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, we've had it, we've had great leadership with this group that, you know, they set the tone as far as what it looks like, you know, in the weight room. You know, not all of them are extroverted leaders. Uh, some are introvert leaders. And, uh, you know, they lead by example. And, you know, but they've also, you know, done a really good job of bringing up, you know, some of the some of the younger guys and bringing them along and saying, hey, you know, this is how we this is how we sure. work here. This is how we keep our locker room clean. Uh, you know, we <laughs> we actually had that talk today. Uh, the varsity locker room is not the JV locker room. And, uh, you know, when you get done with the peanut butter, you put the lid back on the peanut butter and you put the bread back together, all that type of stuff. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's one of those things where, you know, you're, you're constantly preaching the leadership, you know, into these kids. And luckily we got a lot of great kids, you know, in this group uh, that are constantly uh, working with some of these younger guys to help create the next group of leaders. That's amazing. I'm just thinking about, um, you know, those younger people because the seniors are in that place and the, just the the aspiration, right? Um, speaking of senior night, you know, we'll walk through with parents. We'll have the introductions. Anything else that you, uh, anything special or, or arranged that you do for your seniors as they move through the program? Yeah, we'll have, uh, you know, their parents will come up tomorrow. or I guess it's Thursday. I gotta figure out what day I'm on. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, their parents will come up on Thursday, and uh, they'll decorate their lockers. Then uh, we'll have a uh, booster club. will have some some goodie bags okay. uh, for them. Uh, then the day of, which we're we're out of school Thursday and Friday. Uh, we got some staff development stuff up here at the school, and so we'll we'll bring them up. So we'll still have our breakfast with champions in the morning. Okay. Uh, do our walk through, and then bring them back up. Uh, in the afternoon, we let the we let the seniors kind of pick, you know, what we're doing for pregame meal uh, on this week. And so, uh, shout out to Chipotle; uh, <laughs> they're the ones uh, uh, that the kids <laughs> wanted. And uh, you know, and then you know, the senior night we have, uh, you know, we allow them to to bring their parents up there, uh, introduce them, walk them out. Uh, I'll be out there on the 50 yard line, give a big old hug, and you know, just thank them for for being part of it, and then refocus and hopefully take care of Mr. Rich. You know, you know they're a very talented football team. Excellent. Yeah, there's a lot going on, and I think that's a great transition. Did you have another question? All right. Um, again, we talked at the beginning, 4-4, four 3-3 and four, three and three in district, um, doing a great job at home, having a great crowd, all that stuff. What what do you uh, 
what have you been pumping into these young men as they prepare for Vista? Because we've talked in the past that it's kind of nice to be in control of your yeah. your destiny. So Absolutely. moving forward with that, what do you think? No, I think it's you know that's that's the biggest thing. You know that's what we talked about right after the game at Vandergriff is that you know we're in control of our destiny. You know over the next two games, uh, you know we win the next two games, we're in the playoffs uh, outright. You know, yep. we're not counting on so-and-so beating so-and-so and then seven points or six points or 13 points in a tiebreaker and a round robin and this and that and everything yeah. else because it gets a little funky uh, with our district and who's beat who and, and everything else. And so, uh, you know, we're excited about that. You know, uh, Mr. Ridge is a very good football team. You know, uh, Coach Scott does a very, really good job over there. Uh, their offense does a lot of moving and, and motioning and things like that. Uh you know, so, you know, we're excited to see that, you know, see what they, they bring to the table there, that challenge uh, that we could do, that little chess match that we got going on. Uh, you know, Coach Leonard's excited, you know, on his side yeah. of the ball and, uh, you know, wants to make sure that, uh, you know, he makes the impact. You know, he's he's had great nights at home, and so he's uh, he's excited about being at home again. And uh, then we got to figure out a way to, to take it on the road, uh, that last one for uh, for McNeil. This guy, is it, is it help at all to be to have already been at Dragon Stadium to kind of know what's going on there? Does that matter at all in any way, shape, or form? I don't know. I guess I have to ask these guys because I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out for us on the road. <laughs> we, we're uh, some familiarity, you know, some know. familiarity or something, you yeah. know. Uh, and, and I don't, I don't know what it is. It's uh, you know, it's not our routine is pretty much the same. Sure. Uh, you know, on the road is what it is at home. You know, we, we try to time everything up about the same as far as when we when we walk the field, when we, you know, start taping, when we, like, are actually on the field uh, for pregame warm-ups and everything else. Everything times up pretty much the same. Uh, you know, so I think it's just, just a little bit of a mental thing. And then also, you know, you get Round Rock, you get Vandergriff, uh, both on the road. You know, those are, those are two tough uh, opponents uh, that can go either way. And so, you know, we're excited about the, the opportunities that we have over the next two weeks and, and know that we can uh, we can put two weeks together back-to-back uh, -back and uh, we'll be in the playoffs. And uh, then you never know what's going to happen. Well, as a, as a fellow spectator, I'm um, very excited to see what happens next. Yeah, I was just going to say the in terms of, you know, the road, it seems that when you're on the road, having all three phases – is usually kind of the hardest thing, right? Because at home, everybody's so comfortable, right? So um, in terms of getting all three phases on the same page, um, how is that looking for you guys? As far as just... Yeah, just it's in terms of um, the offense clicking like you want, the defense clicking like you want, and then special teams clicking yep. like you like you want. No, I think that's that's gonna be the big that'll be the the big question. And the, can we start fast? Yep. Uh, yeah. You know, I think that's the the big one right there. You know, we come up with a game plan, uh, and then make sure that you know we know what we're gonna be doing the first three to five plays. You know, Coach Leonard likes to he likes to script out. Uh, he's different from me in that in that aspect. Uh, when I when I used to be an offensive guy, as Coach Gaylor says, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know he likes to script out his plays uh, in the in those first couple series and you know get a beat on uh, on what they're doing. I think uh, if we do that, uh, you know, defensively on the road we we've, we've, we've yep. been hitting uh, pretty well, and I think special teams have been pretty good. Yep. Uh, I think you know oh, absolutely. just uh, getting that. Well, I said with the exception of the Judson game, the first few series were ugly. Uh, but you know we, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a straight shooter. I say that's it. all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was what it was. But both times our kids were like, "Oh man!" and then came back and started playing a little bit better. But you know, I think that you know overall we we got to you know mentally lock in and, and we'll walk through uh, a little bit better. Uh, we did that uh, this past week, and so I think that's gonna that'll help us with our uh, with our preparation of being being mentally uh, you know intentional uh when we step onto the field yeah it seems to me that the, the the level of play that the defense has risen to will give a lot of confidence to the offense it, it felt that way especially in the second half this mm -hmm. past friday it felt that way yeah mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a it's a good group they, they feed off each other and you know and I think that, you know, in the same way, the defense is going to feed off the offense. When the offense is hitting on all cylinders, you know, the defense is, uh, is a lot more comfortable uh, in its own skin as well. That's one of the things I know I kind of took you off guard with the whole loose comment. But, you know, your players respond. They don't react. Yeah. They respond to what's given to them. And that's one of the things I talked to, uh, interviewed uh, Sorto a few weeks ago. And um, just um, how the defense puts it with the, the mindset of putting the offense in the best place. 
best spot to make something happen. Setting each other up. You talked about Cashin. Cashin's a ball hawk. The, the takeaway is early in the season. I think it's time to just saying, bring some of that uh, yeah, this takeaway the, stuff back. And this was the first week we didn't have a takeaway. Mm -hmm. this, that, was, that was our that was our disappointing thing. Mm -hmm. is that we didn't. This was our first game that we did not have a takeaway. But Vandergrift doesn't turn the ball over That's very it. much. He did have turnover on downs on defense, which is yes, pretty huge. Yes, turnover on downs is big. We we always want to get a we always want to get a fumble recovery. We always want to get interception. And uh, this was the first game that we didn't get one of those. So uh, we're definitely going to try to try to make up for that in this game. Excellent. All right. Well, we're coming up to the final. Um, I don't the the F word right there final and I know we we talked a little bit off off uh, script here but uh, um, wouldn't like very much to have a, a fifth one but we'll we'll see what happens so um, we'll say final for now <laughs> um, but we may surprise y'all and come back for for a fifth one so um, do appreciate you um, all this time uh, being able to just reach out and ask for ask for things and bring up ideas and and I always appreciate your feedback you have um you're not just wearing the hippos hat you uh, you juggle the team the coaches everybody so thank you for including us in that this season I'm looking forward to what's next and do appreciate um being a part of this community and of this team quote unquote as it were so thank you for your hospitality for welcoming us in for making this possible for everyone to find out a little bit about the ins and outs of huddle football and uh, on behalf of Trey and all of us, thank you to Coach Com or to Coach Compton, to Brad the Plant for uh, making this possible. And of course, you're going to see a QR code right there. And uh, I forgot to allude to that last time, but make sure that you uh, get on that and donate to Huddle Football to make um, these things happen Thursdays, Fridays, every day, so that it runs smoothly. So he doesn't have to do as much as he does already. I appreciate that. Now y'all been, y'all been awesome. This has been, uh, you know, it's been a great transition. You know, from, from what we had with Todd and uh, and jumping in here with y'all with Vipe, it's been, uh, it's been a phenomenal transition for us. And so, really appreciate everything that y'all done. Thank you so much. Fourth and final coaches show in the books. We may be back. We may be not. Maybe not. But we'll see. Until, um, wish you the best of luck and uh, let's get to those playoffs. But uh, one at a time. I appreciate it. All right, Michael Rose, Trey Grubb, Coach Compton, we'll see you next time.